welcome to the Social University Podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today because we want to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and people just like you who want to build their business online. Listen, if we can do it, you can do it. So let's go. Welcome to 2024. As a small business owner, as an employee, moving forward with social media, a lot of times means looking at what's behind you. You have to kind of know what worked before so you'll know what's going to work in the future. And you need to be aware of the basics and the foundations. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about all during the month of January. This week, we're going to discuss classic strategies and mastering the basics. Um, Next week, we're going to talk about resetting your profile for the new year so that you can audit yourself and make sure everything's where it needs to be. Uh, The week of the 17th, we're going to talk about mapping your success and how to build a content calendar from scratch. January 24th, we're going to talk about the top 10 must-have tools for 2024. And January 31st, we're going to talk about connections and how to build a stronger community, not only online, but in person. So today, we're going to get back to basics. We're going to get to the foundation. What do you need? And if you've been doing this for more than just a few minutes, you know, it can get away from you in a hurry. Things change. There's new products. There's new platforms. Threads was a thing last year. Twitter stopped being a thing last year. It's, it, it changes constantly. There's there's constant um, updates and new tools. And so you got to have the foundations, got to have the basics down. So we're going to talk about the top 11 things that you really need to master so that you can move forward this year with your business and your online presence. Um, number one, you have to have defined objectives. You have to know kind of where you're going to make sure you can get there correctly. Uh, I joke around about this a lot and talk about you wouldn't just get in your car to go on a vacation and hope that you find the right hotel. You have to have a map to get there. Same thing for your social media. You cannot wish for success without knowing what your objective is. What is your objective? Do you want more followers? Do you want to build your community? Are you wanting to raise brand awareness? Are you wanting to drive sales? You have to know that so that you can define those objectives, and which leads to number two. Once your objectives are really identified, then then you know how to identify your target, which will allow you to focus on your audience and the right platform. If you are targeting um, women in their 70s, you have to be on Facebook. Each platform has its own unique audience with its own unique pros and cons. So by understanding your client avatar and your messaging and how you are going to reach your customer, it allows you to pick those platforms. Now, most business owners are everything to everyone. You are not only the social media manager, the marketing manager, you're also the janitor and the you, know, you do your payroll. It's a lot, a lot. So ideally, Okay, let me not say ideally. In normal circumstances, most business owners can only handle two, maybe three platforms because there is a ton of work involved in making sure you're posting content, creating new content. It's a process. So I will tell you, start with one and get good at one before you move on to the second one. But having two platforms that you're really good at or even one platform that you're really good at, it's totally okay. You don't have to be all things to all people. You don't have to be everywhere. You can be if you can handle it or you have a team of social media specialists doing it for you. That's totally different. But if you're doing it alone, a couple of platforms is fine. Fine. Okay, number three, you have to post good content regularly on time that you're getting the most um, interaction engagement and on the days that are most important to you. There are ideals for this and then there's reality for this. Um, Ideally, most platforms across the board, you need to post at least once a day, five to six days a week, most platforms. There's times and there's all kinds of things that go into that. Um, I am happy to delve into that further, happy to, but Reality and ideal don't always go hand in hand. If you don't have time to post on your LinkedIn page five days a week, you can make three days work. I would much rather see really strong content three times a week than just okay content six times a week or five times a week. So first and foremost, the content's got to be good. And then you need to schedule it at the appropriate day on the appropriate time. That's how you do it. Now, 
everything's different. Instagram changed their rules last year. They want to reel a story and a carousel post every single day, seven days a week with multiple stories a day. Again, reality and ideal are not always going to go hand in hand. YouTube only needs one video a week, but if you're going to do shorts, you got to do them every day. Each platform has its pros and cons, and you need to be tuned into your audience with your objective in mind so you can identify the right one so you're posting the information you need to when you need to. See how all this kind of the one thing leads to the other? Okay. So uh, number four, respond to your comments and DMs, please. People, consumers as a whole, every year, you have less and less time to respond. They expect a response from you normally in an hour. If it takes you 24 hours, that's that's long. So you have to respond to your comments and your direct messages on each of your platforms. If you struggle with that, again, you can hire it out. You can assign that task to some one specific person in your audience, but you work so hard and spend so much money to get that engagement. Do not ignore it, especially the younger the end user and um, Instagram, TikTok. They expect a response on every message all the time. So you can't just ignore them. Now, are there programs you can use to automate some of that? Absolutely. But you got to respond. <laughs> so even if it's not you personally, you have to have it set up so the folks are getting a response consistently. Um, monitor your industry. Um, uh, excuse me, let me, let me back up. Monitor your brand. You need to know what people are saying about you and your brand. Now, there's all kinds of different options for that. Um, of course, the free option is Google Alerts. If you want to pay, there's a great program called Mention that will pull every single time your name is mentioned, whether it's tagged or not, whether it's hashtagged or not, it finds the mention. So you can also go to each platform and search for your, your name and search for your company's name. But you need to know what people are saying about your brand, especially if it's negative, you have to be able to deal with that. So pay attention to what people are saying. Okay, so that leads us to number six, monitor your industry and continue to learn. No industry, and we have dealt with a lot of different industries, medical, financial, legal, they change. It changes. The rules change. You have to stay on top of what's happening in your industry. First and foremost, to be considered an expert so that you can add new clients that are comfortable with your knowledge base, but it also helps you generate new content. So if you have to treat it like content creation in order to learn it, you do what you got to do, but you have to stay on top of it. Um, it just, it allows you not only again, to create great content it allows you to communicate and execute for your clients the best way possible. Okay. Number seven, you need to identify trends and continue to learn also. So, I, and I've said that twice now, I mean it. So in number six, you're monitoring your industry and you're continuing to learn about your specific industry. Now you're going to monitor. And when I say trends, I mean, what's trending online. Trends happen and they change literally in the blink of an eye. So you need to spend enough time on the platform that is your dominant platform so that you can make sure you're staying on top of trends or even worse, don't, don't do it wrong. There's a, uh, and I can, with <laughs> the utmost faith, people do trends wrong all the time. It's not a good thing. You're, the users on that platform will make fun of you for it. So don't, don't do that. You have to know enough about it to be able to maintain it in a um, realistic and consistent way. So if one of the trends is um, showing your year end in video, that's totally great. The, do it. If it works for you, if it serves your purpose, if it helps your audience and moves you to your objectives, do it. But you do need to know what they are because it is possible for you to comment on other trends that people are participating on without you participating in it yourself. I'm a, um, I am watch a lot of the PR nightmares that happen on TikTok because that's fascinating to me as a marketing person. I want to know how they got themselves into this hole and how they're going to get themselves out. That is fascinating. Now, sometimes will I stitch those videos and comment, give my two cents? Absolutely. Um, do I ever hope to be part of a PR nightmare? Please, Lord, no. So you don't always have to participate in order to comment. So, But you do need to know what the trends are so you can stay on top of that. Whew. Okay. Number eight, answer questions about your business, your industry, yourself, your own journey, and groups and forums. <laughs> Excuse me. So LinkedIn and Facebook both have a ton of activity in groups. 
So if your ideal client is um, an information technology officer and they have a group on LinkedIn and they're talking to each other and they have a question, a technical question, an industry question that you can answer, answer it. It helps you stand out as the industry expert or the leading expert. It works to your benefit. I am a firm believer in what goes around comes around. So if I'm in a group and I don't know the answer to the question and I know someone else who does, I'll refer them to that person. I'm not trying to gatekeep information. I think that's ridiculous. Share it. Again, what goes around comes around. If you help somebody today, somebody will help you tomorrow. And there were people who helped me yesterday, so it's my turn to pay it out for tomorrow. So Share when you can, answer questions when you can, and you don't have to be the one who knows the answer. You can even add to the question with a more provocative version of the same question so that you can help move the conversation forward. You can also take the negative on conversations where you disagree with the person who's making the comment. As long as you're um, diplomatic and not rude, you can absolutely do that. Um, Number nine, connect with your customers, especially your brand warriors. And you know who I'm talking about. You will consistently see the same person commenting, the same person liking, the same person watching your videos. Talk to them, call them out in a, in a, really gracious way. Like you're not going to say, Oh, this user, um, you know, John Smith too. He needs to get a lot. No, no. I mean, thank you so much for your support. Is there anything you need? Can I answer your questions? What do you want to know? So my next video can be directly aimed at you. How can we help you? That's the kind of engagement because 10 brand warriors are more valuable to you than a hundred followers you bought, or even a thousand followers you bought online. Please stop doing that. Stop buying followers. We know you bought the followers. We can see it. If you have a million followers and your engagement is at 1%, it's fake. It's fake. It is not helping you. Right now, these algorithms are trained to reward engagement. So if you have a bunch of purchased followers and you're not getting engagement, that algorithm is going to think your information isn't valuable and it's going to stop stop showing it to everyone, not just the purchased people, but all of the people. So stop doing that. Really engage your community, really engage those brand warriors. And I'm going to get into that later this month when I talk about how to build your community so you can establish those brand warriors. But those are the people you want on your side. And I'll, again, I'll take one of those, 10 of those over a thousand or a million bought, hands down. Um, number 10, check your analytics. What is working? Um, We do work with several business owners who are very convinced that this specific thing is working for them, only to find out later that that is not the case. Check those analytics and do what worked again. If reviews get you the most engagement, post more reviews. If video behind the scenes gets you the highest engagement, post video behind the scenes. Keep doing what you need to do to grow engagement. And the only way to do that is to check those analytics. And I I mean, I've been the first to admit, we've had series before that I thought was going to be awesome, that didn't do well, that we had to pull because we checked the analytics and it just, it, it just didn't do well. So it's totally okay to check that and arrange and plan accordingly, just just so you know. And number 11, (laughs) schedule in advance. You have other things to do. Again, you're the janitor and the CEO. There's stuff going on. Schedule your social media posts so that you're not a slave to it. You don't want to look up at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Oh, no, today was the day we did our launch and I didn't post anything. That's not good for anybody. You definitely, definitely want to very consistently post. The easiest way to do that is to schedule whatever day is down for you. If your down day is Thursday at 2 p.m., you can schedule your following weeks on Thursday at 2 p.m. If your downtime is Sunday afternoon and that's when you want to do it, that's when you do it. But do what works for you consistently. And scheduling is your friend. You don't. You don't want to be in the middle of some, and it's so much easier to streamline. Seriously, I can show you, I'm actually working on a live course, right? Live eh, recorded, working on a course right now where I can show you how to find your content, generate the content and get it scheduled in an hour and a half a week. It's possible to do it if you streamline. Streamlining does not include panicking every single day, trying to figure out what you're going to post next in the moment. 
Planning and scheduling is the key to streamlining. And it also means having your research and your industry knowledge up to date so that you can be your own best resource to pull information from. So those are my top 11 foundations, mastering the basics, things you have to start with before you can move to the next thing. And the next thing is going to be auditing. So first and foremost, you want to make sure you have the foundations done. You have to know who your best audience is. You know which platform to pick, which will tell you what content to choose, which will tell you the best days and times to post so that you can engage your end users and respond to those comments and respond to those DMs. See how this, it's all a process. It, it all goes hand in hand and you have to be consistent, consistent, consistent. So um, that is it for me today. Please join us next week when we talk about um, new year, new you, new year, new audit, uh, resetting your profile for the new year to make sure the information that is necessary for success is in your profile online. Because I can tell you right now, um, we see a lot of wrong ones. A lot. So I want to give you what you need so you can make sure that that's not you. You guys, if you have any questions or there's anything you want to know, feel free to comment on this video or send me a direct message. If there's information you want us to cover, I'm all about it. I love your suggestions. Just send us a DM. Thanks for joining me. And uh, I'm Karen Taradis. Until next week, I'm here to help. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for the Social University Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Stay Social U. That's the letter U. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, you've got this.